I'm going to talk a bit about partial differential equations which have some discontinuity in maybe their coefficients. So the particular example I want to talk about is the heat equation and um, the discontinuity is going to be in the coefficient that I'm introducing. So I'm, the, I'm using the usual heat equation d phi by dt equals d2 phi by dx squared but I'm also incorporating a coefficient sigma um, which I'm allowing to be discontinuous so as a function of x. So it depends on x. When x is negative it's going to be equal to 1 and when x is positive it's going to be equal to 2. So we should think of this as being a heat equation for an infinitely long one-dimensional rod which has some kind of discontinuity in the way that heat is conducted between x negative and x positive. Okay, so to solve this equation, uh, I'm actually not going to specify an initial condition or anything. I'm just going to look for the separated solutions and see what, what they are. Um, so let me separate variables. If I separate variables, um, let's say we take phi of xt equals x of xt of t, then the equation becomes x times t prime equals sigma x prime prime t. Now the prime on the t denotes time differentiation and the primes on the x denote x differentiation. Okay, uh, and dividing by xt, this gives x prime prime times sigma over x equals t prime over t. And as usual, this side only depends on x, this side only depends on t, so the whole thing is a constant. Right, so as usual, this implies uh, t is e to the lambda t maybe times some constant, and x satisfies the following equation. So x prime prime is either lambda times x or a half lambda times x, because remember sigma is this function which is equal to 1 when x is negative, so that gives this equation, x prime prime equals lambda x, or it's equal to 2 when x is positive, which means that when x is positive, x prime prime equals a half lambda x. Okay, but each of these is a simple harmonic motion equation on the domain where it's defined. So that means that x prime, well, x equals one of the following things. So it's either some combination of sines and cosines, or it's linear. or it's a combination of Seinch and Koch. Um, now let me be more specific. So um, let's just concentrate on the region where x is negative. Then in that case, the solution here is sine px and cos px. And this is the case where lambda equals minus p squared. So lambda is negative and I've introduced this p so I didn't have to write square root minus lambda everywhere. The second case here is where lambda equals zero and the third case is where lambda is positive so lambda equals p squared and this one is sinh px and cosh px. Okay so this is all I've done is write down the general solution of the simple harmonic motion equation x prime prime equals lambda x. So this is on the x negative region. So let me write the solution x as x1 in the region where x is negative and x2 in the region where x is positive. So here I'm really writing the solution x1. So I'm going to write a subscript 1 on all the coefficients a and b. Okay, similarly we can solve the equation for x2, which is x2 prime prime equals a half lambda x2. And the solution for that simple harmonic motion equation is a1 sine qx, sorry, a2, uh, using subscript 2. So a2 sine qx plus b2 cos qx, or a2x plus b2, or a2 sine qx 
plus b2 cosh qx and again this is for a half lambda equals minus q squared or a half lambda equals q squared or lambda equals zero and this is where x is positive okay so this is our solution for x and now the key thing we need for the solution is to specify the constants a2 and b2 in terms of the constants a1 and b1 and to do that we're going to make an assumption about the solution so we're going to assume continuity we're going to assume that x is continuous at 0 which implies that x1 of 0 equals x2 of 0 in other words the values of the function match up at this interface here and we also want the function to be differentiable so we want the derivatives x prime to be continuous at x equals 0 and that means x1 prime at 0 equals x2 prime at 0 but what do these two equations mean well just for simplicity I'm going to restrict to the oscillatory solutions the oscillatory case and I don't need to do this but might as well do it so in other words I'm only going to consider the case where lambda is negative um, okay so if I do that then what do I have well x1 at 0 equals well a1 sine p0 which is 0 plus b1 times cos p of 0 which is 1 so, so it equals b1 and x2 at 0 similarly equals b2 so the continuity condition implies that b1 equals b2 so that gives b2 in terms of b1 excellent um, what is x1 prime at 0 well differentiating a1 sine px plus b1 cos px we get p a1 times cos px at 0 which is 1 and then a term with a sine px which vanishes so we just get p a1 and a x2 prime at 0 is similarly q times a2 and these two are supposed to be equal to the, the continuity of the derivative so in other words b2 is b1 and a2 is p over q times a1 so what's p and q again well remember p squared is minus lambda and q squared equals minus lambda over 2 so 2q squared equals p squared in other words p is q root 2 so okay our our general oscillatory separated solution is therefore going to be e to the minus lambda um, times t and remember lambda is um, minus 2q squared times a function of x and the function of x is well it's either a1 times sine px and p is q root 2 plus b1 cos q root 2 and this is when x is negative yeah that's x1 and x2 is going to be well, a2 which is now p over q a1 and p over q is root 2 so root 2 times a1 sine qx plus b2 which is equal to b1 times cos qx when x is positive so if you imagine for example 
the solution um, maybe it's given maybe maybe it's given by b1 equals 0 a1 equals 1 so this function is the initial function um, is going to be just like sine q root 2 x over here and over here it will be root 2 sine times sine qx in other words its period or its uh, its wavelength will have uh, increased by a factor of root 2 but its height will have also increased and that compensates so it looks like this and that's how we obtain the continuity of the derivative of this point that that playoff between the increase in wavelength and the increase in amplitude okay so for example this if this is your initial condition then it evolves like e to the minus q squared t so it decays like e to the minus q squared t so if this is x then the solution is phi equals e to the minus q squared t times x okay so you can write down lots and lots of separating solutions this way um, and that explains how to deal with discontinuities in equations <laughs>